If you are still struggling with your kids' bed wetting, pants soiling, temper tantrums, and childhood disorders, to mention only a few, the answers to your problems may be found in Ken Resnick's new red uh, new title. Uh, it's a new book entitled Parenting Decoded: Disciplining Kids in the Digital Age. This book aims to educate parents on how to regain their authority while teaching their children discipline and behavioral control. Uh, Ken Resnick is an author and educational psychologist. He is in studio now to tell us a little bit more about this book. Good to have you. Welcome to Modern Life. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. So we talk about parenting decoded. So yeah. my interpretation immediately is in this digital age where everything is about technology, I suppose disciplining kids, technology has got to be a part of it as well. Absolutely. I think that's the big problem. Yeah. I think we've lost the plot as well. Uh, I think too much focus is on the child. The children are going to be assessed. They're going for therapy and the parents get more and more anxious because they're being labelled with all sorts of disorders. So basically where I come from, if we sort of got to think back very briefly, that our initial role as parents, if you look at the indigenous people, the Khoisan, they are the primary educators of their kids. In other words, they help those kids handle that environment, that yeah. hostile environment from an early age. How to survive, how to recognize berries, how to hunt. They are the primary educators. I don't think you're going to get an ADHD Khoisan child. I don't think you're going to get a child that is oppositional defiant, etc. Yeah. And that's how it used to be years back. And we tend to have lost the plot. So what is happening now is that the children are being isolated. They are being assessed and the parents are left hanging. In the training of all professionals, in terms of children, there's nothing on parenting. So what I've found, and I, I have a very sound theory, is that firstly, a child, every child has potential. Yeah. Every child is born to take on life. They're equipped to take on life, but they cannot bring themselves up. Yeah, They're yeah. totally dependent on an adult. That's why it doesn't have to be the biological parent, but an adult, be it a step-parent, etc. And they're the educators. So the primary educator is the parent. The secondary one is the teacher. Yeah. But and te are we finding that, that in, in this day and age, uh, it's shifting and that parents are not doing their job? Because they don't know. Nobody's helping them. And the kids are in control. What I'm finding that in the majority of households, they're screaming and shouting. Yeah. Now, the moment they're screaming and shouting, the kids are in control. And if the kids are in control, it's chaos. Yeah. Because you don't go anywhere. You can go out to that. Like little three-year-olds don't even know how to say please and thank you. Yeah, tell me about uh, it. And it, it starts down there where the moms are doing far too much mm. because they're guilty, shame, let me do this, let me do that. And they're just not allowing the kids or showing the kids how to cope on their own. If I can very quickly tell you what I do in my rooms when little kids come. Yeah. You've got the time. So normally when young kids come with their parents, I've got a bowl of sweets. There's two things they do. The first is they sit on mom's lap. Yes. And I say to them, you've got a choice. You can sit on my lap or next to mom. What do you think they do? Next to mom. Absolutely. Okay. The bowl of sweets are open. Very few will just go and grab. And if they do, I say to them, whose sweets are those? Yeah. And of course, they pull their hand out. They hide behind mom. The majority will walk around those sweets. Eventually, they whisper to mom. And I say, what do they want? They'd like a sweet. They've got to ask me. The majority of them will not ask me. Now, that's already indications of problems. Mom is there, everything's safe, and that child will not ask me. Eventually, the few that do will sort of mumble. I get them to say, may I have a sweet, please? Yes. They have these little endearments that are easy to open wrappers. They take the sweet out. Give What's the mom. first thing? Give it to mom to open. Yes. If they want that sweet, they open it. Two-year-olds can open it. Eventually, they open it. What do they do with the wrapper? Give it to mom. Absolutely. My There's child will there. run across. He'll run across a field, a field of dustbins. Yep. He will. <laughs> there will just be dustbins everywhere. And he'll find me standing probably about a K away and run to me to give me a piece of paper so I can throw it away. No, exactly. I'm like, what, do I look like a dustbin? But, but you see, it's indicating <laughs> that... Now what have I done wrong, Doc? No, this the is thing bad. is, the thing is like, what they can do, they must do. So he can take it off. If he doesn't take it off, he doesn't have a sweet. It's yeah. as simple as that. Yeah. They're able to. So they've got to learn to persevere. And one of the early warning signs of issues with kids is lack of pers perseverance, where they only want to do what they want to do. So the moment it gets hard, mom, you do it. Mom, pick me up. Mm. They give up the moment the game gets tough. They're scared what of trying are, something. Are we talking from three-year-olds? Right from birth. Right yeah, from it's birth. all about choice. Ten-month-old children, when they cry to be picked up and you pick them up and they stop crying, have made a choice. Yeah. So you've got to be able to give them choices right from an early age, but let them understand what the choice means. So, for instance, they don't want to eat their food. 
They don't have to eat their food. Yeah. What does it mean? It means that, they, and you're not cross, that's the important thing. It means that they're choosing to go and play in their room. We don't know why, we're a little bit surprised. They get hungry later on, tough, kitchen's closed. But they made the choice, you're not punishing them. Yeah. They chose not to eat, kitchen's closed, tough. The next morning you wake up and you can say to them very calmly, mommy just wants to know, are you going to have supper tonight or rather play in your room? They will have supper. So you're avoiding all the shouting. You're making it their problem. Yeah. And that's what we don't do. We well, make it our problem. You know, you, 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 you're you hitting on things that are so vitally important. Because, I mean, if I look back to days gone by, you know, when, when my parents were bringing me up, it was a strict environment like that. You know, you yeah. don't eat what's on your plate. That's fine. Yeah. Then go to bed hungry. That's your, that's your choice. That's if you it. don't like the food, your problem. You know, nowadays, I find, and I, and I do find that with a lot of um, parents that are in the same bracket as I am, we do too much for our kids. We are, we are I, I mean, I never, ever remember my mother being so involved in play dates and organizing this yeah. and going there and, and running my life from every second that I'm awake. But I find that parents are doing that. When did this shift happen? Why do we feel this way? I think it's guilt. I think we, and we're following each other. We don't want to be seen as bad parents. So Monday is, Monday is play ball, Tuesday is ballet. We're doing everything for them. Yeah. And, the, and we're putting them in front of that TV and we're also scared to even let them sleep out. So they stay at home and they just watch TV, play in the box, and then they say they're bored. Now that is a problem. When kids say they're bored, you know you've got problems. There's so much they can do mm. because we're busy entertaining them. That's with it. a feeling of entitlement. Instead and the whole them. idea is how do we help them Take on challenge. They're born to take on challenge. Yeah. They're born to learn. Yeah. Every child is equipped to learn. So why are they choosing not to learn and not to read? Those are choices. Yeah. And the, all of a sudden they've got extra lessons and, and moms are pulling their hair out. Yeah. And there's nothing worse for a mother to be told that her kid's got some sort of disorder. What does it do to a parent? How do they relax? Mm. So they often overcompensate, overprotect, and all of these styles of parenting create problems in the child's as he goes into his world. One thing we, we haven't touched on yet, and I think it's a very important aspect of, of this generation, is, is technology. Because, you know, as much as, as much as we talk about behavioral habits and habits that I can try mm. and fix, this is a world of technology mm. now. And uh, if your kids have it, there's, there are issues with it. And if they don't have it, there are issues with it too. I mean, schools are emailing their pupils. Uh, they've got to submit assignments on them. Uh, kids are wired in a way where technology is part of their being, but it's causing major issues. Mm. What's your take on technology? Technology's got to be controlled. It, an overdose of it, first of all, they've shown, they've proven, for instance, cell phones, etc., etc. Kids become addicted to these things. Where they can't. Now, that is the, a huge problem. And if they don't have them, they become very insecure. Yeah, and overstimulated, so like, I like I've, I've just brought up twins. And there was no TV in the day. They only had cell phones when they were 10 or 11. And then only for a limited period of time. Because they can, they don't need it. Mm. And we're not be overprotecting. And it's very important, for instance, like all moms seem to stay at parties with kids. Kids should be left alone at parties. Why? Because if they want to go to the toilet, they've got to ask that lady. Not say, mom, and grab you on a wee. Mm. And off we go. They can do that. They've got to learn to be in touch with the bigger world out there and do lots for themselves. But we're doing it all for them. Yeah. Mama want an ice cream. All you've got to do is go and ask the lady. But we get up and we go and get the ice cream. Those little things are the problem. We should be able to drop a kid at a party. If you have a party for your child, I know you're going to look after her. I don't think you've got a pedophile ha hanging around in your cupboard somewhere. Mm. And you'll handle that party. But yeah, they run up and down to mom. Or they mix too much with adults because we won't let them go and play with other children, because we feel bad. Yeah. And when, uh, for instance, uh, there's a lot of only children, they mix far too much with adults, and then they become inappropriate, and they're not well socialized. Because remember, kids have to deal with their world, which is not our world. Six-year-old's got to deal with that school playground, his friends, learning, putting his hand up to ask questions. And if we haven't equipped him for that, he comes home and we're doing it all for them. So we're actually telling them you don't have to because somebody's going to help you. And it's that sort of learned helplessness that's happening. And then we, we let them play on these things. And yeah. they don't even ask. They go and just switch on a the TV. Yeah. They go and take a, a cell phone out of your bag without even asking. That is a fact. That so, is a fact. So we have all, and those are early morning problems. Our kid to this day, Mark, they're 15, my stepkids. They never turn on that TV without asking me. Wow. And they said to me, but isn't it a family TV? I said, sure, but it belongs to me. Yeah. You ask. That's all. I'm never going to say no. And they've got to understand that. 
Yeah. They've got this feeling that everything belongs to them. Listen, you're my hero. I'm going to read this book. I need to read this book, I think. Parenting Decoded Discipline in Kids in the Digital Age. It is available in bookstores. It's going to be it, 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 it's, uh, out to the end of January next month. Excellent. So yeah. it's going to be bookstores. But visit the website, smartchoiceparenting.co.za. Uh, Ken Resnick is the author, and he's also an educational psychologist. Some interesting tips there on the mistakes we're making when bringing up our kids. Thank you. I've learned a too many lessons this morning, I think. That's it. From now on, they are, they're going to even cook for themselves. That's yeah, it. End of good story. idea. If I can. <laughs> Ken, Absolutely. Thanks so much for talking to us here on the program. Thank you. All right. Let's take a break. When we return, it's that... Uh